All right, good afternoon. Thank you everyone for attending today's webinar, Evolution of HMIs and their use in hot and humid environments, brought to you by AVG, Easy Automation, and Design World Magazine. My name is Paul Heaney, and I'm the Editorial Director for Design World. A little background on me, I have a mechanical engineering degree from Georgia Tech, and, and I have been covering manufacturing and engineering for almost 15 years now. I am pleased to be your moderator today. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our presenters for being here today and to introduce them, Vikram Kumar of Easy Automation and Ari Berendreff of FormFlex. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping details, too, before we get started. Um, if you wish to tweet about this webinar anytime during or after, you can use the hashtag DWWebinar, all one word, and we will have a Q&A session after the presentations. So please go ahead and submit your questions as you think of them, and we will ask as many of them as we can after all the presenters are finished. And questions can be asked using the GoToWebinar dialog box there on your screen. All right, now to our presenters. Uh, Vikram Kumar is Vice President of the AVG Automation Group, which is comprised of Autotech, Uticore, and Easy Automation. The AVG group of companies deal with semiconductors, printed circuit boards, press automation controllers, secure telecommunication devices, automation HMIs, PLCs, marquees, and other related equipment. They serve as a standard supplier for most Fortune 1000 companies, including Ford, GM, Chrysler, Procter & Gamble, Nestle, IBM, and Johnson & Johnson. And Ari Berendreff is General Manager North America for FormFlex. Ari was born in the Netherlands. He has a degree in electrical engineering and has served as a Dutch ra Army radio engineer as well as working in the oil industry. And now on uh, to our first pre presenter. Without further ado, I'm going to hand the mic over uh, to Vikram. Vikram, take it away. Vikram, I'm not sure we can hear you. I want to make sure you're you're unmuted for the audience. Can you hear me now? Uh, we hear you now. Great. All right. Uh, so, so I'll begin. Uh, thank you again, Paul, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, I want to uh, welcome everyone to today's webinar presentation. Today's topic is on the evolution of HMIs and their use in harsh, uh, in particular, hot and humid environments. Um, the AVG Automation Group is proud, uh, you know, to follow its theme of innovation by design. And what we'll discuss today is uh, both the technology uh, behind an HMI, it's, uh, in particular, its backlight. Um, just a little history of, um, you know, backlights. Uh, quickly before we get into the detail, um, <clears throat> from CRT displays to CCFL backlit liquid crystal uh, displays, that's uh, LCDs. And now white LED backlight LCDs, uh, touchscreen HMIs or operator interfaces uh, have come a very long way since their early introduction in the 1990s, early 90s. Um, understanding the technology behind an HMI is very important when deciding which one to use. Uh, parameters such as the life of the display, the quality of the picture, the brightness um, of the display all come into play when deciding which HMI will best suit the application in its particular environment. Um, hence, uh, as we stated earlier, the webinar discusses the evolution of its HMIs, and in particular the backlight um, of the HMIs, which are used in many industries uh, today, uh, you know, these operator interfaces from automotive to medical to packaging, pharmaceutical, food and beverage, uh, transportation, and many other types of applications. <clears throat> A uh, brief outline of the webinar. Um, first, we're going to uh, briefly talk about the overview of AVG Automation, uh, some of its products that we cater to, and uh, um, so we can discuss some applications in the end of the presentation, uh, as well as an overview of FormFlex, uh, an easy automation customer, uh, a very good easy automation customer who's been with us for some time, uh, who will talk about some application notes as well. Uh, we'll talk about the AVG HMIs for demanding type applications, and uh, of course the details and the technology behind the, uh, the HMIs, in particular its backlight. 
and um, of course the FormFlex application. So uh, briefly about AVG Automation. Uh, AVG Automation is a mini conglomerate of many different electronic companies as Paul has mentioned earlier. Uh, we were established in 1968. Uh, we have introduced more than 500 innovative new products. Um, so a touch panel is one product, a PLC is one product, um, timers, counters, power supplies, all different types of products um, out there. And each of them are rated for uh, harsh type environments, hot and humid environments. Um, we do our extensive hardware, firmware, and software design in Illinois and Iowa. Um, what's unique about us is you know, we're really the only manufacturer that truly can say that we manufacture all the automation products in the United States and actually export out to countries like India and China. Um, so all of the products which we will talk about today are in fact manufactured in the United States. Um, ABG group of companies uh, is a vertically integrated company. Uh, the ABG automation is one division of it. Uh, we have our ABG semiconductor division, uh, which actually the you know simple 74HCL series logic gates and uh, simple type of ICs that actually get put into the final products of operator interfaces and PLCs um, get put in the ABG components actually get put into the uh, ABG final product as well. Uh, we do our own printed circuit boards and of course uh, thick film hybrids and uh, many other divisions as well. I'll let uh, Ari speak quickly on the uh, introduction of uh, FormFlex and uh, what, what they do so you guys get an introduction of um, the application as well. Okay, thank you, Victor. This is Ari. Thank you all for uh, listening in. Uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, AGMI uh, combination uh, PLC units that we're using. FormFlex Bio, uh, we're a uh, worldwide company uh, supplying growing systems in the uh, large horticultural industry um, as well as a lot of logistical systems. And on the logistical part of our systems, that's where we use the AVG AGMIs. Um, branches in the Netherlands, Canada, the USA, Spain, Mexico, Poland, and also recently in China. Uh, we do uh, about 700 projects uh, per year. Uh, so the numbers that you see on the screen are a little bit uh, dated, but um, one of the biggest uh, use for uh, for our AVD uh, AGMI controllers is the um, hanging basket system. It basically transports waters, automatically counts um, hanging basket systems. Where I will be talking a little bit later in uh, how that's used and how we use the AGMI. Uh, thank you for now, and uh, I'll get back to you in a couple slides. Thanks, Ari. Um, so a little bit about uh, the HMIs um, in particular and the evolution of its HMIs. Uh, one thing that's very important to note is, is that uh, ABG was the initial inventor of the touch panel HMI back in 1992. Uh, they have come a long way since then, of course. But as the years go on, ABG continues to come up with the latest and greatest technology based on customer application requirements. So based upon all of your guys' feedback, uh, we, we end up designing products based upon those application requirements. Um, and because of this, we consistently win the Engineer's Choice Award, uh, which is an Oscar for the automation industry uh, every year. Uh, for example, and since 2008, we won the award for the best HMI. In 2009, we won the best touch PLC award uh, and a touch PLC for those uh, who may not be aware of it, that's a combined touch panel and PLC unit all in one. Um, and recently in 2012, uh, the best uh, smart encoder. So all AVG products are designed and tested to withstand very harsh and demanding applications. Um, you know, all AVG products are halt toss certified in the fact that when we take a product to market and claim it has extreme temperature or humidity or visibility capable uh, capabilities in such harsh environments, we in fact have the ability to test it under such extreme conditions um, under this halt toss uh, type test chamber. For example, uh, uh, HALT stands for Highly Accelerated Life Testing and HOT stands for Highly Accelerated Stress Screening. 
the test chamber itself can go from minus 60 degrees to 150 degrees Celsius at 100 degrees C per minute and 50 Gs of shock and vibration. So when we say these products can be um, uh, go up to certain extreme temperatures of an HMI, for example, uh, up to 60 degrees C, uh, that is 140 degrees Fahrenheit, we actually have the capacity to test out the mean time between failure and the longevity of the HMI um, with the product. And the reason behind this, of course, uh, is, is its backlight. Um, so just a little background on the old type of HMIs uh, uh, of the CCFL2, that is a cold cathode fluorescent light versus uh, a white LED backlight. Um, just so everyone's aware, 91% of all HMI failures, that is the first thing to ever fail in any operator interface, is its backlight. Uh, most common HMIs have what is called a CCFL bulb um, powering its backlight. It has many restrictions in terms of longevity when it comes to temperature and humidity, which we'll describe why. Um, and th uh, third topic is more modern technology displays, uh, as can be seen on the focus of TVs these days, are white LED backlights, uh, which produce brighter, crisper, and longer-lasting displays. As such, AVG has taken HMI technology to the next level with its exclusive patent pending uh, LED-based backlights. What you have here is it just shows at a maximum temperature of a CCFL that goes up to about 50 degrees C, your life will last you about two to three years, whereas a white LED HMI will last you eight to 10 years uh, at a maximum temperature of 60 degrees C. So, so now what I'm presenting here is actually the graph of how the temperature uh, affects a backlight um, itself. That is a CCFL versus an LED backlight. Um, LCDs with a cold cathode fluorescent uh, lamp, uh, again CCFL for short, uh, you know, the, they have uh, tremendously enhanced uh, in the past the quality, brightness, and lifespan of an HMI as compared to the old CRT displays um, that originally uh, uh, were the power behind the HMI backlights. Uh, however, what one might be surprised of is the LCDs with a CCFL backlight started off with only a lifespan of 5,000 hours. The CCFL backlight LCDs improved over time going from 10 to 15, to 20, all the way up to 50,000 hours of backlight uh, life, which is uh, normal in today's CCFL backlight HMI. Of course, the lifespan of a CCFL backlight L uh, LCD depends on the temperature and humidity in which the HMI is sitting at. Um, even CCFL backlight LCDs and more expensive TFT, that is uh, thin film transistor uh, technology LCDs operating at 25 degrees C, they normally at last about 50,000 hours. So if you see here on the graph, the CCFL light, uh, backlight is at 25 degrees C, you have about 50,000 hours. That's 77 degrees Fahrenheit. But as uh, the temperature increases, the backlight dramatically decreases. For example, as can be seen in the uh, graph shown, if the temperature of the LCD rises to about 40 degrees C, that is 104 degrees Fahrenheit, the life of the CCFL deteriorates to roughly 20K hours. You cut in half um, at 40 degrees C. As for relative humidity and its role in the lifespan of a CCFL backlit HMI, its wet bulb temperature, uh, that is if it's humid, uh, uh, humid out uh, type of environment, its temperature, is, wet bulb temperature is 39 degrees C. That is, if you have 90, above 85% humidity and your bulb is at 39 degrees C, that means your HMI is in an environment above 39 degrees C or 100 degrees Fahrenheit, your bulb itself will just become inoperable. Once the CCFL backlight LCD reaches its maximum humidity range, um, the backlight just simply uh, gives up. Whereas on a white LED-based backlight, you see here the characteristic of a white LED, 
um, you know, they're not so temperature dependent, as can be seen. The backlight hours are from 95,000 to 100,000 hours, all the way from 25 degrees C up to 60 degrees C. Um, so you get wider temperature specs as well as longer lasting backlights at the more extreme uh, temperatures. Uh, the reason behind all of this is, of course, the makeup of the CCFL versus white LED, which we will now go into uh, some more detail. So what I have here is actually a picture of um, the internal uh, guts, per se, of a cold cathode fluorescent light. Uh, so this is the inside of a tube. Um, you know, the, the challenge for CCFLs uh, behind all of this really relates to how they work. Um, in, in summary, the, the CCFL is a light source classified as an electronic component. Uh, the CCFL, in simplest terms, is a gas discharge light uh, source, um, you know, which produces its output from a stimulated phosphor coating uh, inside the glass lamp envelope. The, uh, the typical CCFL is a hollow glass cylinder coated inside with a phosphor material composed of rare earth elements and sealed with an electrode at both ends, which can be seen um, in this uh, picture right, uh, diagram right here. Uh, the way CCFL works, ultraviolet energy at uh, 200, uh, roughly 250 nanometers is produced by ionization of the mercury uh, and the penning gas mixture um, by the application of high voltage to the electrodes. The UV energy from the mercury discharge stimulates the phosphor coating, thus producing light output. Um, so quite a complicated process. Um, in short, a CCFL can be described as a transducer converting electrical energy into light energy. Um, a, a lot more complicated with all of its chemicals, phosphor, phosphors, and mercury vapors uh, as compared to a, a LED, which is just a simple anode and cathode. Here what we have uh, is an example of the internal um, uh, circuit and the L, uh, CCFL bulb that, uh, that actually exists in all eight, uh, conventional uh, HMIs today. Um, what one may not be aware of is the fact that in order to light up a CCFL backlight uh, LCD, a supply voltage of over 1,000 volts, uh, typically anywhere from 1,200 to 1,500 volts is required. So what you see here is a high voltage inverter circuit board with a high voltage transformer that's actually powering up uh, its backlight. It, it, it's very power hungry. A CCFL based backlight is very power hungry um, as well as temperature dependent as shown before. Um, one thing that's quite interesting about a CCFL bulb and a, and a CCFL backlight is despite their name of you know cold cathode um, fluorescent light, uh, they don't uh, we really remain cold as they operate. They get actually painfully hot. Uh, this aspect of CCFLs can become quite problematic for uh, CCFL backlight LCDs because, of course, as the temperature increases, then the backlight itself is, is increasing and um, it's reducing its lifespan and causing erratic operation. Um, again, so the hotter it gets in the environment as the cold cathode itself heats up, um, that's where you have uh, some issues. This is a graph of the relative humidity versus temperature of a CCFL uh, bulb um, in, a, in a backlight. So what, what I have shown here are the safe and unsafe regions uh, of operation. The uh, of a CCFL backlight. The maximum temperature of a CCFL-based uh, HMI is 50 degrees C. Um, you can look on any spec sheet of any HMI, uh, including the Easy Automation or AVG CCFL-based uh, uh, HMIs. Um, they generally uh, uh, can only go up to 50 degrees C. Uh, the relative humidity of a CCFL backlight is also 85%. Above that, uh, you see all the unsafe regions above 50 degrees C and 85% humidity.
Now, white LEDs, on the other hand, uh, which are, of course, um, light-emitting diodes, are solid-state devices that consist of a chip of semiconducting materials doped with impurities to create a PN junction. Um, as in other diodes, current you know, easily flows from the P-side anode to the N-side, which is the cathode. Um, but unlike CCFLs, white LEDs do not have gases and phosphors that require high voltages to operate. Uh, in fact, they operate at 5 to 24 volts. So the backlight, instead of a 1500 volt inverter circuit, it's a strict, uh, in our case, a 12 volt uh, backlight, which um, is a lot less power hungry uh, and it generates a lot less heat. It dissipates a lot less heat as compared to the CCFL bulbs, hence one of the reasons it has a wider temperature range. Um, due to its low voltage operation, uh, without the need of, you know, its intensive backlight inverter boards, uh, white LED uh, backlights generally last twice as long compared to the CCFL backlights, uh, anywhere from 75K uh, to 100K hours. So as can be seen here, um, at up to 60 degrees C and 95% humidity, you have the safe region for both the white LED and CCFL versus the uh, unsafe region beyond the 50 degrees C for a CCFL-based um, backlight. Anything above 60 degrees C technically then uh, is not uh, rated for either a white LED-based backlight or uh, CCFL, and the longevity of it itself um, can be influenced, of course. Um, uh, furthermore, as compared to um, a CCFL bulb, again, the temperature range as, a, as opposed to the 50 degrees C, it goes up to 60 degrees C at 140 degrees Fahrenheit uh, with a humidity uh, tolerance of 95%. Uh, so a summary of the CCFL versus white LED-based uh, backlight. A maximum temperature of uh, 50 degrees C on a CCFL, that is 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which will last you uh, anywhere from 6 months to um, 12 to 18 months, depending upon how well the backlight, uh, the bulb itself can last, uh, versus a LED-based backlight. Um, at 60 degrees C, you'll get complete um, 100,000 hours of backlight, that is 140 degrees C. Um, in our use case, actually, uh, at higher temperatures, um, uh, which in some of its cases are used above 60 degrees C, they've been lasting for a few years as well. Um, again, on the CCFL, you have a wet bulb temperature of 39 degrees C at 85% humidity versus a 95% humidity at 60 degrees C. Now, one characteristic of a CCFL bulb versus a white LED is, of course, um, the nits. And uh, nits are classified um, as the brightness. You know, often touchscreen HMIs, brightness is often measured by uh, the number of nits, which is the lumens per square meter. There are, uh, on a typical CCFL bulb, uh, you'll get about 200 to 300 nits of brightness. Uh, versus an LED-based backlight, you have 500 nits, so it's a more crisp and brighter uh, display overall. Um, and of course, finally, uh, another advantage of a white LED uh, versus uh, based backlight versus CCFL is, of course, that if a CCFL bulb goes out, the entire backlight will go out. You'll have to either, it'll be either field replaceable or you'll have to send the unit back in and uh, they have to completely replace that entire bulb uh, because the HMI cannot be seen um, at all. It just, the, uh, the screen will turn completely black. Uh, whereas a LED based backlight, since the backlight is comprised of multiple LEDs, um, hundreds of them for, for that matter, depending upon the size of the HMI, um, if an LED goes out, um, you know, it, the display may actually become a little less bright and it may be a little inconsistent. However, you're still going to get visibility uh, of the HMI. So you, you, don't, um, you don't have any downtime of the HMI. Um, what I want to do sh uh, now is pass over the mic uh, to Ari 
uh, again, who is a very good customer for Easy Automation. I thank him for being um, uh, with us today. Um, who's really going to talk about the type of technology, how it fits in his application, and how um, the LED backlight has made a difference uh, for him uh, in his hot and humid type uh, greenhouse application. Hey, this is Ari again. Application using uh, easy automation. Well, the the biggest thing, uh, like I said before, is uh, where we use the uh, AVG um, <coughs> HDMI uh, combination PLCs. They are in a greenhouse where they grow a lot and lots of bedding plants. Um, automatically, that's an environment that, uh, especially in the summer times, getting very hot and, uh, like Vikram said, uh, way above the uh, the 60 degrees Celsius that we're talking about. Uh, but our biggest issue was the uh, the humid environment and uh, the long long lasting um, of the HDMI, of course. Now we did a lot of research worldwide on HDMI's, and um, we found a lot of uh, um, HDMI's that were not capable of handling uh, our temperatures, and for sure not the uh, the humidity. And on the other hand, uh, we're in an industry that is uh, working with pennies. So we had to keep our costs down as well. Uh, so it was quite a struggle to find an uh, HDMI combination that, that that we could use and would be still feasible to uh, to sell our product. And we need the HDMI on our product because um, there are so many things that we control on that hanging basket system, and we could not do that with a, a simple on-off switch. Um, it was unique in the industry, but we found uh, through um, uh, research, we found AVG. Uh, we went over there and. Uh, visit them and, and looked at what they were doing and, and how they were doing it and then on top we got to hear that okay everything is basically manufactured in the United States. Well of course that was very interesting for us as well because these systems are mainly produced and, um, and sold in the United States and uh, we have a company in Canada as well but everything we, we sell locally we try to manufacture and build locally so it was a big point for us. Uh, we did testing uh, with the units in the environment and uh, basically uh, we found out that uh, the only HDMI that was capable of uh, of handling the environment is the AVG uh, HDMI. So we're very happy with that. Now I'm waiting on the slides to move over but I think I have to ask Vikram that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Outdoors, oh that's a good one too. I mean our greenhouses, most of them are uh, are closed right because they want to keep the heat in and so on but also we have greenhouses where the uh, part of the year are completely open um, that's uh, kind of another issue because then you have to deal with the, uh, the humidity that is uh, in, 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 in the environment at that time um, one of the things that we wanted to know because we had to place it in a uh, NEMA enclosed uh, enclosure uh, we're going to get rid of the heat uh, the HDMI is uh, also having a uh, power supply in the same box, so we need to, uh, to dissipate the heat. And we find that uh, by normal ventilation with a, uh, with a little uh, fan in the box, so we're actually sucking up uh, outside air, blow it through the box and blow it out on the other side, in which case you bring the complete environment of, uh, of the, the, the existing environment inside the box, uh, and it, it it works very well. I mean, we are still surprised how uh, how well the uh, also the PLC part keeps up with the uh, the heat and the the high humidity that we're uh, we're putting in that box. Then on the other side, if if the temperatures are getting colder, uh, a lot of our customers are not using the greenhouses in the winter, so they're going to go dormant, and uh, that gives temperatures to up to minus 30, minus 40 uh, degrees cel uh, centigrade. So another thing that we were uh, waiting on is, uh, okay, you promised us that it will keep working, but what is going to happen after three months of dormancy, low temperatures, and then just start it up? Well, there's no problem at all. As soon, they, uh, as, soon as the customer turns on the power, the HDMI powers up, and it just acts like nothing happened. Um, direct sunlight. The direct sunlight is uh, mainly on, uh, on the box, and again, that, that only causes a higher temperature. I think we go way over the uh, the 60 degrees Celsius centigrade that uh, Vikram is talking about. Um, however, what what we did find out is if we do the HDMI in uh, direct sunlight uh, without any um, 
cover on the, on the front uh, that will tend to uh, bring the life uh, life uh, time of a uh, of the touch screen down, and not the uh, the screen itself, but the touch buttons are uh, are hurting by that. So to make sure we have a long lasting lifetime uh, also on uh, on the touch screen, we uh, we do make a cover on all our uh, controllers. Uh, humidity I talked about um, and and hose down, yeah. It's a, it's a greenhouse environment, and basically uh, a greenhouse environment means that it has to be, uh, if I can say that, uh, completely stupid proof, because people are not well trained, there's a lot of temporary labor, uh, so it's it's a really harsh environment. And um, I'm glad to say that uh, Vikram screens are holding up to that as well. We're working with them for uh, five years now, and um, yeah, I can say that we have, other than uh, misuse by, uh, by customers, that we have... Uh, a lot of uh, defect uh, screens. Can you do the next slide, Vikram? There you are. Okay, thank you. Yeah, what we do is uh, again we have um, we transport the, the the plants through the greenhouse, right? It's uh, in general there is about a thousand fifteen hundred plants that are hanging on one transport system, and of course it's hanging above all kinds of other growing stuff, so the grower cannot reach. Uh, his plants. Uh, the system we have, they are capable of bringing the plants down, uh, put the motors on, and, and uh, adjust the speed for, for whatever they're doing, for loading and unloading. And then the other part that is very uh, important is uh, the watering. Now, so many uh, customers, so many wishes, and uh, because we have the HDMI PLC, we are the only one in, the, in this industry that are offering a wide, wide range of uh, different watering programs. I mean, basically, it's endless. Whatever the customer uh, was asking for, we built it in there and made it available for uh, all our other uh, customers. Um, the number of yeah, the number of baskets can be counted, which allows for uh, different watering options. Uh, we see large greenhouses where they all have the same plants and that needs the same amount of water, but you also see smaller greenhouses where they have several types of plants on one system. So what we developed uh, in the PLC program is uh, a counter, and um, basically the customer is capable of selecting uh, any number of plants and give every, every number up to 16 stages, uh, give every, uh, yeah, how do you say that, um, Every let's say every 20 or, or 100 plants, a different watering uh, treatment, and that's that's very valuable uh, to us. It also comes always back to a home position. So um, for the for the customer, it means that okay, he has uh, a couple of days he's let, letting uh, the watering go automatically, uh, and if he walks by, he will always see the first plant uh, stopped at the first row. So he knows that every plant has been watered. Um, then on the last part, and that is kind of interesting too, because the easy programming of, of the HDMI and the PLC, the, the easy program language, uh, we started to play around with it a lot, and <laughs> that, la that, that went to uh, giving the customer all kinds of options. He can see whenever the system is oiling, whenever the amperage is going up, uh, how many hours he's running, uh, he can see the real-time amperage. Um, yeah, we build a lot of toys based on the simple programming that uh, that uh, the AVGB uh, AGMI has, and uh, we'll still uh, we'll still keep doing that. Next slide, please. Here you see the uh, the front of a control box on side. Basically, this is uh, standard for us on uh, on the hanging basket system. You see the little uh, uh, protecting uh, plastic on the on the front. Uh, again, that is strictly <clears throat> because we we see that if we constantly expose them to uh, to di direct sunlight, especially when the greenhouse roofs are completely open, it does hurt a little bit. So, uh, and with this, we have uh, no problem uh, of a uh, long expected lifetime. Uh, the whole closure is uh, is a NEMA enclosure. Uh, the only cables that go in is a, um, a network cable directly to the um, uh, frequency drive on the motor control unit and um, and the power that's all and that's why uh, we can still have a um, little ventilator on the side and uh, even with the ventilator and people are spraying these boxes uh, we have no problem with water or uh, humidity 
uh, damage in the uh, in the unit. Next one, please. Yeah, this is typically a start screen, and um, one of the reasons we wanted to go with an HDMI, and probably for everybody that's listening, is that that's pretty logical. But for us in the industry, it was not so logical. Is that we have color, we have the possibility of doing different colors, uh, have different buttons with uh, long text in there, because again, there's there's a lot of temporary labor, and if you make just a um, uh, a black and white screen with only text, it tends not to work for the people that are, are working in the, on, the, on, the, on the labor jobs in the greenhouses. This actually uh, helps us a lot, and, uh, and again, because of the very interesting price point of uh, AVG, price quality point, uh, we were capable of, of using these uh, full color uh, TFT screens uh, in our systems, whereas uh, if we didn't have the AVG AGMIs, uh, we should have to go back to uh, uh, black and white just because the share cost price. So we're very happy with that. Next one. Oh, I guess uh, that was the last one. Well, thank you very much. And um, like you see, there's a question and answer uh, uh, part here. Please, uh, any specific questions to, uh, to our gr very uh, Heavy greenhouse uh, environment. Uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, to answer them, and I'll stay on the line for a while. Thank you very much. Well, great, great information, both Vikram and Ari, and thank you so much. Um, so, as, as uh, we had just seen, we're going to take the remaining time for uh, questions, and we already have some questions that have been coming in, but that doesn't mean it's too late. You can still send in yours. Simply use that little dialog box on your GoToWebinar screen, and you can type the questions in, and we're, we're going to answer as many of them as we can. All right, gentlemen. Uh, first question, what are the ratings of the HMI, HMI offered, and can you explain a little bit about the rating systems? Um, yes, the, uh, I'll take this question. Um, the ratings of uh, the HMIs on the easy automation side are NEMA 4 uh, slash 4X uh, for indoor and outdoor use. Um, essentially, that uh, entails complete wash down, hose down, um, you know, uh, dust and it, it um, uh, industrial grade uh, type environment. On the Uticor side, another division of ABG on our HMIs on that side, uh, on top of the NEMA 44X, we also have Class 1 div, uh, Division 2 uh, that entails groups A, B, and C, uh, and D for uh, different uh, or various types of gases, acetylene and uh, different vapors and um, uh, which can be purged into a class one div one type uh, environment uh, uh, for pressure ratings as well. Okay, great. Uh, here, here's a question for Ari. How are you cooling down the HMI in a humid environment like in a greenhouse? Well, like I said before, it's a, it's amazingly simple. We have a, a little, uh, what is it, a one and a half inch ventilator on the side of the box. And a uh, with a little um, yeah uh, protecting uh, dust screen on front of it, as well as on the other side of the box we have a screen opening with uh, with a protector on it, and we just blow uh, blow some air through the box, and uh, it keeps the unit down, and uh, and obviously it it keeps the unit also well ventilated enough to not let the humidity uh, do anything to. Uh, to the HMI. I mean, even if it's uh, mm -hmm. if it's a humid day and we're uh, we're opening the box during the day, you won't see any uh, condensation on the unit. So that's uh, that's pretty good. Okay, great. Um, Vikram, what what sort of networks do the controllers use? Networks. Um, they so we are uh, networked for all uh, more than ninety seven percent of all the PLCs out there. So. Um, in, including Modbus and Ethernet IP and uh, DeviceNet and Profibus. Uh, we're actually even uh, an Allen Bradley licensed house, so the uh, only two HMIs support the old Bluehost technology that is Data Highway Plus and Remote I.O. That's Rockwell themselves and uh, ABG, so Data Highway Plus is included, Profinet, um, you know, a, a list of all the drivers, uh, which is just through a drop-down menu, all of it is included uh, within the HMI hardware itself. So uh, 
uh, basically covers uh, more than 97% of all PLC networks out there. Oh, very nice. Okay. Um, how, how does OLED life compare with the technologies that you spoke about? Okay. Uh, an OLED display uh, actually, is, it's a very good question. Um, they're very crisp displays. Uh, a lot of the televisions today that are starting to migrate towards OLEDs, of course all TV sets have migrated towards LED based uh, versus the old tubes and all. Um, and OLED is a lot more crisp uh, in terms of its picture quality. Um, in fact, uh, we had some vendors uh, showing us this, that this is the new type of technology out there, um, uh, which will, I think, become uh, an option for AVG before anyone else does uh, in the near future. Um, actually, I watched uh, Finding Nemo on an OLED HMI uh, once. Uh, but it's a very crisp display. Uh, its temperature ratings are uh, um, about the same because it still has the LED-based uh, backlight, but in terms of its quality of the picture and the number of pixels and the uh, graphics for uh, aesthetic purposes, it's a very nice uh, uh, display. And I'm sorry, and the life again? The, the life will be the same. The, the life of okay. the temperature, so the temperature at its life of an OLED um, uh, is still rated at 60 degrees C, at least for the eight, uh, OLED displays available uh, in sizes for HMIs. Now there is OLED technology out there that can actually withstand higher temperatures than a standard LED, um, but uh, not yet available on uh, display sizes that can be used in HMIs. Okay. Um, well, can can you define what you're using for life for the CCFL and the LEDs? Another person is asking that. Uh huh. Uh, so when we say life, that that's the backlight hours rated at a particular uh, temperature. So uh, your life of the display is based upon how long your bulb will last. So at uh, you know a standard CCFL bulb at 25 degrees C will last you 50,000 hours. Now as that temperature increases, your backlight life, the uh, the bulb itself, which uh, illuminates your entire backlight. Uh, as that temperature increases, that backlight life decreases. So when I say 50,000 hours that's equivalent to about five years or so. Um, and uh, uh, for the same, same parameter on a LED, of course, the so backlight hours is based upon the longevity of the bulb or LED that actually illuminates the entire display. If okay. that uh, answers the question, hopefully. All right, another uh, viewer asked, there are several CCFL backlights designed for automotive application with a 70C maximum operating temperature. Could you please comment about these devices? Mm -hmm. So, um, well, first off, we, we work very heavily with the automotives, and uh, you know there are many applications, especially in uh, um, you know like Ford, or for example, with paint uh, paint booths and uh, the stamping plants and all that. Uh, they can become quite uh, high in temperature. Mm -hmm. Now, the CCFL bulbs that are in there, um, you know, a, a CCFL bulb can last up to you know 70 degrees C. However, um, we don't know the longevity of the, you know, it can last, it could be as short as three months, it could be six months, it could be a year. It's really flexible, it really depends on how well the HMI is ventilated. Uh, if there is an air conditioning unit in there, what I do see is uh, if you walk into a plant in India, for example, like a Ford plant where outside ambient temperature is about 45 or 50 degrees C, and uh, inside the control box where you have um, you know your VFDs and your starters and all these other uh, components in there that generate heat uh, that can get the uh, box up to about 70 degrees C. Uh, air conditioning units are generally put in there or certain types of fans to cool down um, that uh, HMI. But if you look on any spec sheet um, for any HMI with the CCFL bulb, they'll have a clear notation on the bottom. So it'll say uh, 50 degrees C or 70 degrees C uh, but then you have to see the, at that temperature how many hours is it guaranteed for, or how long will it last. Okay. Uh, another question, could you go over again how you generate the white LED light? Um, so essentially, now, now this is a patented uh, technology from AVG, but what we do uh, from an overview is the displays that uh, 
are standard uh, manufactured by display companies out there. Um, what we do is we actually have to take it apart, uh, take out that CCFL bulb, and replace uh, LEDs, uh, you know, and replace that entire inverter circuit uh, with white uh, LEDs. So we're actually taking out that bulb and uh, putting in multiple, you know, depending on the size, hundreds of LEDs uh, surrounding the display itself um, so that uniform light shows on every corner uh, of the HMI. Um, those LEDs are being uh, systematically put into the uh, display itself. The physical well, said that years ago they used six inch uh, HMIs uh, that did not hold up well in a South Florida environment. Um, has the technology changed on the HMIs and should uh, they expect better reliability today? I'm sorry, is that particularly on a six inch HMI? Uh, six inch, correct. Okay. Um, what, it was, they did say it was a six inch easy touch is, HMI. Um, with six inch uh, display manufacturers, uh, that, that is the physical LCD display, you know, the liquid crystal display manufacturers, um, the, they're starting to produce six-inch uh, displays with a LED-based backlight without having to do any of this extra steps uh, okay. or this patented technology. So they have improved significantly on the smaller size screens. Display manufacturers have figured out how to do it on smaller base screens. Um, so six-inch screens have improved quite uh, significantly in the marketplace as a whole, uh, not mm -hmm. only from AVG but from other manufacturers as well, just because the original display manufacturer uh, is starting to produce LED-based backlights in there. On 8-inch, 10-inch, 15-inch, 12-inches, 21-inches, on larger type displays, uh, those still will have the uh, standard CCFL bulb um, unless it's through the uh, Easy Touch or uh, ABG uh, Dura Panel Series. Okay. Have you experienced any kind of condensation issues between the touch screen and the TFT in a high humidity environment? Uh, sorry, uh, uh, one more time? Any, any condensation issues in a high humidity environment? So, uh, High humidity with condensation. So you're talking about the physical touchscreen membrane or the, the display itself? Um, they actually said between the touchscreen and the TFT. Okay. So, so the, between the touchscreen and the TFT, which is the display itself, um, if it's not properly sealed or if, um, you know, one way I could see an issue coming where the liquid can come in between or humidity can, can become between the display and the touch screen would be if it's not properly sealed up front. That is the NEMA 4 rating because what's happening then is moisture is seeping through the touch screen uh, to touch the actual display. That, that's, that's not a good thing. Um, but the effect of an LED versus CCFL, of course, um, would not make a difference in that case. Have I seen that? Uh, not in our operator interfaces uh, per se. Um, and haven't really covered that, uh, haven't really seen it from other operator interfaces too much either. Um, one thing that is uh, a good practice to do uh, for humidity type uh, issues is conformal coating um, all the components. That means the display, the uh, back, you know, the back components in the back, uh, in the back of it, the microprocessors, all of that, so humidity and dust and all these different chemicals and stuff cannot penetrate and seep through the front touch screen as well. That becomes a common practice. Um, Uticor, for example, has that standard. Uh, Easy Automation has that as an option and um, other companies will charge a little bit extra for that generally. Mm -hmm. uh, another person asked, what configurations are used in ATMs? What type of... Uh, what configurations? Um, configurations. Any uh, thoughts on display? that? Is that the display configuration or uh, can we elaborate a little bit more on that question please? Um, yeah, if that, if that uh, viewer can uh, give us a little more detail we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, go, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, one other one I wanted to ask you here. Um, someone wanted to know how this could be replicated. I, I assume he's He's maybe talking about the, the greenhouse example. How can it be replicated in a very large area of farmland? Okay. Um, 
I mean, it, it's pretty much the same environment in terms of temperature and uh, uh, humidity in a farmland, of course, an outdoor application. Uh, we do have, I'll, I'll answer partial of it, and perhaps uh, Ari can kind of help a little bit of that as well. Um, you know, we, we do have customers that uh, use these on tractors on farms, for example, uh, as well as, um, you know, for uh, picking up corn, like, you know, cornfields and all of that. Uh, to automate that type of systems. We, we do have uh, farm users out there. Um, how it would be a particular application, perhaps Ari, um, you can describe, you know, physically how the HMI is picking up the baskets and putting them in, you know, so that they can be all watered automatically. Perhaps a similar type of structure could be done uh, in an enclosed farm space. Yeah, and <clears throat> basically our uh, our systems can be uh, installed uh, indoors and outdoors, and that's what I tried to uh, to make a point of before too. I mean, we we do have the majority of uh, our systems in uh, enclosed greenhouses, but we also do uh, quite a lot in uh, and they call that a hoop house, where it's basically a a pipe construction where our system is hanging on and transporting the plants, and they pull uh, plastic over there for a certain months of the years. Um, the rest of the year, they will uh, pull down the plastic, and it will just hang in uh, in an outside environment. And uh, we don't see any uh, any issues with temperatures or uh, or humidity there as well. Um, uh, regarding your uh, your last answer on the uh, uh, moisture between the screens, I can say that we work in a very very high uh, uh, humidity environment, and we have not had any screens where there's any water in between the TFT and uh, and the front of the screen. So they, they, they work out very uh, very well. Great, thank you. What what brightness level is needed for direct sunlight use? And then what is the, the brightest HMI unit that AVG has that's available? Um, so different uh, brightnesses, typically uh, I would do in and outdoor with direct sunlight um, anywhere above uh, 400 nits, so 400 to 500 nits. Um, there's different types of technologies offered by AVG, uh, you know, for sunlight readable type applications. One is a uh, UV protected sunlight readable display, uh, so it actually protects and reflects that. Uh, it's a transflective technology um, that actually can um, reflect those UV rays and actually can be read in sunlight, uh, used very heavily in Australian deserts. Um, the highest brightness uh, and it, uh, we actually have an HMI that can go up to 1,500 nits. This actually has an additional power supply to it, so you have, besides the 24-volt uh, input voltage, you also have a 12-volt external uh, supply voltage because it has a uh, external backlight to it um, to get up to 1,500 nits, um, and that's called the Hybrite uh, HMI. All right. So uh, another to summarize, question. a typical Go ahead. Uh, sunlight readable would be good to have above 400 nits. Generally, 500 nits is good. Um, but for very bright outdoors, middle of the day, sunlight, uh, noon type of uh, um, uh, application, um, a very high bright HMI is always um, very safe to see in, very, uh, in, in different um, uh, displays. All right, one more question here. We'll wrap it up. Uh, one of the viewers wants to know, can Panel Builder and RS Logix be used with easy automation HMIs and PLCs? Um, so yes, uh, Panel Builder is, of course, um, uh, on the HMI side, RS Logix on the PLC side. Um, but yeah, we work hand in hand with the, um, you know, for example, if you're communicating to a MicroLogix, you know, 1,100, 1,200,000 or Compact logics or control logics. Um, our HMIs have direct addressing to um, the Rockwell PLCs. Uh, you know, with RS logics. In fact, um, you can actually uh, use our I/O with uh, a um, Allen Bradley processor at a fraction of the cost, uh, similar to Allen Bradley's Flex I/O uh, mm -hmm. over Ethernet IP or uh, Modbus or Data Hybrid Plus, any any one of those networks. But uh, they do work hand in hand with uh, RS logics and uh, AB PLCs and um, HMIs. And in fact, uh, one, one point I'd like to add is on our Uticore side, we have direct drop-in replacements to 
uh, all obsolete um, panel views. So, for example, uh, you have the old art, uh, uh, you know, like panel view 1000 or 1200 or, um, you know, 1000E that, that are in plants where now you have to go from a panel view to a panel view plus on a completely different architecture, um, reprogram it from scratch. We actually have, because we're an Allen Bradley license house, we have a conversion utility that can actually suck out an obsolete panel view program or an existing panel view plus program and automatically convert it. Now it converts, uh, you know, 95% of the program. There's always some fine tuning that's needed, but it, a utility that actually can convert the program uh, from a Rockwell uh, type HMI. All right, thank you so much. Well, that's all the questions we have time for today. Uh, we wanted to keep this to an hour, but thanks again uh, to Vikram and to Ari. For all the uh, questions that, that uh, you think of down the road, um, we'll be happy to answer them individually via email. So if you think of uh, questions, whether it be in an hour or a week from now, uh, you're welcome to email those over to me. And my email address is pheney, P-H-E-N-E-Y, at wtwhmedia.com, and I will be happy to pass them along. Thank you once again, everyone, for attending this webinar from Design World and AVG Automation Group. This presentation will be emailed to everyone in the coming days. The presentation will also be available at www.designworldonline.com. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.